Hello, my name is Alex Brownsell. I'm the editor on M&M Global and we've joined together with Bliss today to talk about mobile and location and how brands can use that opportunity of location advertising. Um, I'm going to ask all of our contributors today to just to introduce yourselves quickly and then we're going to have a, have a chat. Hi, I'm uh, Matthew Dearden. I'm president of uh, Clear Channel in Europe. We're an outdoor media owner. I'm Avichai Belitsky, I'm a VP at Interactive. We are a global a mobile ad exchange focused on native and video. Uh, hello, I'm Amy Fox and I look after product management at Bliss Media. And I'm Ben Phillips, I'm the global head of mobile at Mediacom. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about mobile, we're going to talk about location and the opportunities that location provides advertisers. But I thought we'd start first of all where, where you think location is at the moment in terms of the, the use of location data. Is it high on advertisers' agenda? And, and if it hasn't been as high as it could be, why is that, do you think? What, what, what challenges are there to get advertisers to embrace this kind of data a little bit more? Who would like to start me yeah, off? Yeah, well, I think from our perspective, you know, data is probably and location is on every plan that we do. I think we've come a long way over the last year in terms of just doing the proximity, so ring fencing, certain areas of interest and throwing advertising into that particular spot to then start to look at how the consumer journey is affected by location data in terms of how that's kind of been accepted by the brands that we work with. I think we've got a lot better at explaining it and that's really through the kind of use of case studies and trial and error. Uh, uh, so I think that it, the challenge really comes is that was when we're dealing with different people that are purporting to provide you with the best, most effective, uh, clean data. Um, so by working with proximity uh, and location partners that, that we can see that there's a real uh, case study for verified usage, that's good. There's still a lot of people in the market that will tell you that they do location, uh, and unfortunately you only find out that they don't at the end of the campaign. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think the last year or maybe the last two years has been, just what Ben said, a growth of understanding of what location can do rather than just very basic. You are near somewhere as opposed to, you know, we built up a really complex behavioral audience pool of users because we've seen lots of you know, long-term behavior patterns. Um, and I think, I mean, I don't really want to use the word fraud, but I think mm. that fraud is, is a big topic, you know, data fraud almost or data accuracy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Click fraud was a big topic a couple of years ago in online, and I think data fraud is that in mobile for us today. And I think, you know, there are quite a lot of companies that have quite a lot of experience now in, in understanding fraud, and a lot of agencies actually are, are getting much, much better at understanding that there is fraud out there, and actually you just need to work with a location partner who really can pick out um, what is and what is not accurate. And then the, if you if you can harness the very, very accurate stuff, it's what you can do with it is almost unending. I think. Well, I think you know everybody was speaking about the timing you know, of, of the advertising. And of course, I think the next challenge is for, timing is a big challenge. But I, I assume that the next challenge is to really grant value to the user. I used to ways b before I was at Interactive. I, I was at Ways, you know, Ways uh, the the web the, the navigation application, and then we saw, of course, that when you grant value to the user, it can be much more effective. For instance, we saw. AIG, an insurance company, that were advertising when the, when the driver is driving into a dangerous road that is defined by the ministry, um, the, the, by the government as a dangerous road. So then you can pop and get an app that says, hey, you're driving into a dangerous road, AIG. So this is giving value to the user. I think this is the next, the, the next step to, to grant the, the value with the right timing to the user. So you asked about why clients aren't using location more. And I, I think that one of the advantages we've had in recent years in media is a, a lot of programmatic trading has driven some efficiencies. But it's also driven people to focus purely on an audience. And I think we're in sometimes in danger of forgetting the power of context. So as a human being, you're in a very different receptive mind state to different types of messages depending on where you are in the activity that you're doing. So if you simply buy an audience, that is of course more sophisticated than previous in outdoor buying a billboard or a panel. So we are making progress moving to an audience. But I would say across all media, I've seen this particularly online, you forgetting the context at your peril. I think, for example, the, the mistake a lot of online publishers and in some cases agencies and marketers have made is forgetting that if I'm seeing I don't know, a reserved ad for something I searched on Amazon yesterday, re-popping up next to my email when it's not relevant to me, has actually negative value to me. Whereas the same thing on a relevant website, when I'm in the mood and interested in that, is hugely powerful. And I think location 
is one of those most critical contexts, which has become unfashionable because of the drive to a pure audience buyer, which can bring big efficiencies, but we've lost the readiness to focus on the extra effort and the extra cost of targeting the human context of which location is a key part. Um, obviously, you mentioned the interesting example of, of, of traffic and, and, and that kind of information providing. Um, without getting too technical uh, for, our, for our audience, um, what, what are you know, what are the opportunities in terms of what can be done when you do embrace location data? You know, if you've got any examples or you think that, you know, instances either using mobile or out of home or whatever media channel it may be, that, that clients have been able to really enhance and super drive their campaigns using that data. I, th I think and it goes back to your kind of, um, what you were talking about, the context as well. So one of the things that we're starting to use mobile data for is to actually better inform out of home and TV buying decisions. So actually by starting to understand where the consumer is in that journey, like as you mentioned, a lot of the advertising that we run is based on proximity data, but then when we know that they're at home connected to a Wi-Fi, that we can start to run better creative where they've got more time to consume it. Uh, the same with out of home. If I can start to see an individual's journey on a day-to-day -day basis or a, a selection of people, all of a sudden that billboard has a higher value than it would do traditionally. So that's how we're starting to use data. So not to just think about it in, in a specific moment or just being even the kind of the terminator for the ad unit. It's a really good way of passing information back for more traditional media decisions. Yeah, I mean, I think we're also, there's, there, there, you know, there's a lot of questions about whether mobile is the best media format to drive content to users. I mean, it's smaller, it's, you know, it's, it's less, you know, a huge build world has a lot of creative opportunities as opposed to a phone. There are a lot of positives to a mobile phone. It's tactile, it's reactive, it's dynamic. So there's a lot of great things about it, but the data really is the most exciting part. And, you know, it's, for me, it's going to be about, in the next like three years, or maybe even one year, because we're going so fast now, what, what is that data going to start fueling in other industries like TV buying? And I, I think it's crazy that we're now at a point where obviously television is all, of course, digital. But you know, you have a road in London, and you've got ten different households, and in every household, you've got a completely different demographic. You know, you've got an old couple, retired couple in their 70s in one, and then you've got a young university student house next door. They might all be watching X Factor one night, but they'll all see the same ad breaks in the middle, despite being completely different demographics, having different location preferences. And I think, you know, what we're going to be looking at is when that mobile data from people's behaviour throughout the day starts to really influence the buying on other media channels. So it stops being about just the mobile format to deliver the message, but the mobile data to drive all the decision making. And then actually the media servant becomes out of home, it becomes television, it becomes everything. That's sort of the biggest next challenge for us. No, I totally agree. I think one of the challenges is to improve services. When we're speaking about, you know, there, there is a physical world and there is a, the, the, the mobile world. And for example, when you're working in the street, it happened to me, I walked in New York and I, I looked for a suitcase. I looked for a search for the nearest Walmart, get into Walmart. Then I knew exactly which kind of suitcase I wanted. But I just didn't need to climb three steps and go, go inside and realize that the specific suitcase was missing. So it would be brilliant, you know, when I was searching for a, suit, uh, a specific suitcase to understand if the inventory, in inventory is exist currently or not. Because we have these services when we are surfing at home, but when we're trying to connect it to the physical world, it doesn't exist today. So this is a gap we need, we need to fill. So you asked about location, and, and so out of home is the original location medium, and so we're, we're very proud of that. And it's well known for being a broadcast medium, high cover, high frequency, fast cover build, uh, and, and great reach. Uh, and nowadays in most countries around the world, there's some pretty sophisticated audience measurement. So you're able to know from GPS tracking who is going to see which signs. So while it's known for high reach and frequency, it's also startlingly targetable. And what that doesn't mean is that other people don't see the campaign. That kind of overshow is free and it creates the water cooler effect. I think we've seen so many studies that says if you only market your target, you can't create the bars and the fame that you need. So you can quite precisely, using these location research techniques, target the audience you want and everybody else sees it for free as well. So that works very powerfully. But you're also asking about mobile. And I think mobile is a fantastic medium for marketers. I think it's hugely powerful. I frankly think it is the future. I think it is already the first screen, not the second or the third. And I think marketers and agencies are right to focus on that. 
I dare say that I think many are getting wrong in the way they use it. I think it's quite often used with a desktop mentality of serving up quite an intrusive, simple banner ad, which I think is a little bit insulting to the user experience, wastes the bandwidth, wastes the screen size. And in the US, for example, we're seeing over 50% of online users having ad blocking on by default, which is another way of saying that the value exchange is broken and the deal between the publisher, the advertiser and the consumer has broken down and the consumer doesn't accept the value exchange. And my fear for mobile is if we take that model from desktop to mobile, we'll have the same problems. On the other hand, so, so I'm not a fan of mobile as an ad medium in the way we've always thought of an ad medium. I'm a huge fan of mobile as an engagement medium. And I, I think that is the natural first response as a consumer when you're interested in something, a brand or anything else, is you reach for your mobile. So what we've seen in outdoor is we're not an engagement medium, we're an advertising medium. And, and the goal for us is to make it as seamless as possible for the consumer to go from being intrigued by an outdoor ad, but then engaging really deeply on a mobile. I, I'm a huge believer. There's research in the UK that shows that when a consumer is exposed to an outdoor ad, they're 18% more likely to then immediately engage with the brand on their mobile. And that's how it should be. I, I, I really don't think that the mobile data should be used to target too heavily on, on the mobile device. I think it should be used to enrich the engagement experience when the consumer reaches out to the brand, which they do. Yeah, no, I think it's complimentary. We we have one plus one equals three. So everything we do with mobile sits across all of the different channels that we have. So when we are working with our out of home teams, that again we can start to provide measurements back for it. Where out of home might be the the better uh, medium at the time. You know, we're not. I, I still don't think that there's actually a role for a mobile only campaign. I think if you've done that, it's slightly kind of misguided in some sense but I think the challenge for us really at the moment is kind of what is mobile because again that's a very broad subject to tackle so the way we look at it really is mobile um, is it, something which a consumer does it's almost like uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a habit it's something they do they reach for a variety of different screens so when you're starting to think about mobile strategy it isn't any longer just device we start to look at their connected TV the internet of things around the house how does that the connected car so everything here you know, is sort of really kind of driving us to ask that question to ourselves is, is what is mobile? Um, so if we all agree that, that location data really can enhance campaigns and enhance marketing and contextualization, what is the bottleneck? What's perhaps stopping us from, uh, you know, is that within clients themselves? And how can we as an industry encourage clients to start using this data a bit better? I am... Um I, I know this is quite difficult, but I think from the agency point of view, and I think Ben's right, I think just looking at mobile, you know, isolated from other media formats, looking at out of home isolated, out of home and mobile couldn't go better together. They are both location driven technologies. I mean, they're, they're perfectly well suited. And, you know, starting to look and speak to clients and say, don't take your, your budget, your advertising budget, split it into all these little pockets and spend them independently of one another, but group them together. Think about your strategy, like overarching, and then execute it using all the different mediums, track, do your you know, attribution at the end of it using the different mediums and essentially merge it all together and I, I do think the only people that are in control of it is actually the agencies I mean you have your own challenges in that there's a lot of players in the market there's a lot of people that you could work with that do the tracking the attribution the this the that and I think in the next year or so some of those smaller players will drop out the bigger players will come out and it will become a bit easier for you but the, if the agencies are really educated on what they can do only they can take it to the clients and say you've got to you know change the way you look at buying media generally uh, do you agree that the agencies are kind of key in this? Sure, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all on you. <laughs> Listen, today when already 50% of YouTube users are already mobile, 80% of Facebook, 90% of Twitter. So I think, yes, we spoke a lot of about, about data. But yes, this is, is the gap. And I re really agree with you what you said. You know, think about it, that today there is really a gap between uh, agencies that need to adjust their advertisement into uh, advertisers advertisement into mobile think about what is the most remarkable advertisement we ever remember it can be only in desktop we think about maybe the Nike or, uh, or, or Coca-Cola we don't think about mobile so there is still a long way to do to create better ads into mobile and maybe this is part of the bottleneck yeah, so, so, so I'm going to sing with the choir a little bit. Um, <laughs> what, what's very refreshing, to be fair, is to hear the way you talk about mobile as being part of your broader media mix, yeah. and particularly working hard to bring mobile data back into other media. I think you're probably ahead of a lot of other agencies who would still see mobile as a separate standalone medium to yeah. plan. 
and I honestly don't believe that'll work because as consumers we all know that the mobile isn't a segregated medium that we treat in isolation. It's almost the glue that holds the rest of our lives together, which is very much how I heard you talking about it, and I think that will be a breakthrough. There's also a danger as a media owner or an outdoor media owner. It's quite easy for us to want to sell outdoor. Uh, actually, I think that we're much better. I don't think mobile's a frenemy for us. I think it's a friend yeah. because I think it is the natural partner for, for our natural consumer behavior. Yeah. So I think this integration, both the media owners and agencies, will help clients then think more holistically about how these media work together rather than against each other. And I also think that collaboration across uh, sphere, you know, b between out of home and mobile specialists, between TV buyers and things like that, is, you know, it's experimentation. It's, R&D in terms of what you, we could do, technical tests, partnerships, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it starts off very, very small, but that's all it takes to turn you know the industry into something really exciting. So we're already doing some of that in Switzerland, for example. We, we reserve uh, a mobile campaign based on location when a consumer seen the outdoor ad. Mm. In other countries, we have one where we provide the Wi-Fi. Uh, when the Wi-Fi has been served, we then trigger a further ad as they travel through the campaign. So you, you can get a joined up campaign that links mobile and outdoor pretty seamlessly mm -hmm. when you're ready to start from the beginning with the agency and the client yeah. to plan that from the start. Yeah, that's great. So actually, we're doing kind of transcoding for different sizes of video to really overcome this challenge, this, this tech challenge. I'm conscious not to keep you too much longer. So, so as a final sort of summing up thought, I mean, you know, if we're back here in a year's time at the Festival of Media, how do you hope that the discussion around location data and, and the way that it's being used has perhaps advanced and, and evolved? And where, where might we be in 12 months' time? It's a fantastic question. Um, <laughs> in, I, I, I want to see the kind of three main areas of, of mobile strategy excellence kind of really coming into flow. So measurement, uh, data and creative because I think if we start to do those in silos, again, we kind of miss out. So again, not having a conversation purely around uh, one element of that, but you know, how has mobile developed? So I think it's, there's gonna be a lot of consolidation this year. You know, two of the biggest mobile uh, industry consolidations happened in the first um, three months of this year uh, with Opera and the Chinese uh, uh, bid into that. And also AOL taking on Millennial. So I think the challenges that we have, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier, that there's a very wide amount of people in that loom escape all purporting to do the same thing, that are quieting of the markets uh, and a consolidation of solutions. I mean, I, I, a year, this industry is growing exponentially, isn't it, with the mobile growth and all of that. So I suppose it's pretty difficult to, to say. I, I would like to see, you know, I would like to have partnerships in place a lot I mean I'd like to see brands in here in this kind of discussion with us as well because I'd like their level of awareness of it the importance of this to be I mean we're the people working in the industry aren't we it, yeah. should, it should also be the people buying that should be there and I, and I kind of I would like it to be to the point where we're not even discussing it anymore because it's just a fact we're now you know all these different media formats are going to be conglomerated together and we'll be buying it very differently I mean that would be that would be great it's a natural transition it is coming you know it's it's really natural I think viewability is really one of, of, the, of the biggest thing, you know. Uh, we, we see that more and more advertisers looking for viewability and now when you're integrated like to, for companies like Moat that really can assure this, this viewability so the advertiser will feel much more comfortable to go to mobile and I think it, will, it's, it's, it is really showing up very, very quick. So you're asking about mobile data. I, I personally, I think the, we've avoided saying the dreaded big data buzzword so far, and I don't like it. I think it's yeah. overused, and it just becomes a proxy for a very big bucket that you don't know what's in there, uh, because people just look at the volume. I think there is huge value in understanding the velocity, so what's changing in the data, and the vision or the insight you can get from the data. And in this space, what I really hope we'll be able to do is fuse data together so that we're not talking about mobile data or out-of-home data or TV data as though they were separate. I hope we're able to fuse it together so that it's one single source of visionary insight about what consumers are doing and then plan the right multimedia campaign through their life journeys back to the context we talked about at the beginning. So we're giving people the right messages in the right context based on the right location. And I think a fused set of data will help us do that. We won't have got there in a year, but I hope that will be the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Some fascinating thoughts and insights there. And I uh, hope it was useful for you as well. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.